Please, sir, I want some more. A famous line from Charles Dickens' classic novel, Oliver Twist. A famished orphan asked for more food from Mr. Bumble the Beetle, but is refused. This has touched millions of readers' hearts. The wealth disparity in Hong Kong draws many comparisons to Dickens' world, and yet, when given a chance, we to decide not to give our needy more. Good morning, adjudicators and ladies and gentlemen. The recent policy address has come under attack for providing too much welfare. Critics say that the increase in government expenditure will lead to financial unsustainability, and yet, just in the last fiscal year, the government had a surplus of $64.9 billion. Critics say that welfare discourages people from working hard, but what they fail to see is that the working family subsidy scheme is tied to employment and working hours. Simply put by the chief executive, more allowance will be granted to those who work more. This would, in fact, encourage people to work harder. Critics also speak of the abuse of welfare, but it is minimal. In fact, only 9.8% of households eligible for CSSA actually claim CSSA due to the social stigma attached to it. I do not agree with these critics. In my opinion, Hong Kong is only in danger of becoming a welfare state if the welfare is too much and unnecessary. But how could this be when Hong Kong has a Gini coefficient of 0.5, one of the highest in the entire world? How could this be when 1.3 million people live under the poverty line? Professor Michael Sandel at Harvard University poses a question to you all. What are the moral limits of the market? Ask yourself, can we or can you ignore all the social problems right in front of us merely with the excuse of maintaining a free market economy? I cannot. You probably cannot either. Ladies and gentlemen, in the same way that Mr. Bumble has portrayed himself to the outside world as a protector of workhouse children, Hong Kong was portraying itself as a glamorous metropolis. But under this facade is endless suffering for the most vulnerable of beings, unseen, unheard, and unnoticed. The difference between the world in Dickens' writing and our world is that we don't live in a novel. Imagine we can change the story. Imagine when our Oliver Twist asks for more, that we can answer, yes, thank you. Thank you for your speech. Mr. McDougal will now ask you a question relating to your speech. The bell will ring right after the question has been asked, and you'll have one minute to respond. Mr. McDougal, please. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the government, uh, or sorry, I beg your pardon, there are different kinds of social welfare uh, that cover housing, health care, education, social security. Do you believe there is a need to prioritize one over another? Why? Thank you for your question. I understand that there are a lot of groups in a society that require help from the government. And that would explain why we have different types of subsidy under the policy address. And I believe that there is a need for the government to prioritize certain needs of some people. Because um, there are problems that are more urgent in Hong Kong that has to be solved. For example, poverty. Um, there are currently 15,000 people in Hong Kong living in cage homes that even the UN deems unworthy of human dignity. And therefore, currently, the priority of Hong Kong is to alleviate poverty, such as through increasing pu um, public housing supply and also giving um, family subsidy schemes to poor families in order to lift them out of poverty and help them escape the poverty trap. Thank you. Thank you. A second question will now be asked by Mr. Robinson. Again, the bell will ring right after the question and you may then respond to the question. Mr. Robinson, please. Good morning. Good morning. Among young people, bullying is a major source of concern today. And I wanted to hear uh, what do you think schools and communities can do to address this issue? Thank you for your question. Bullying is a very big problem that we see prevalent in our lives. And I believe that the school and community all have the responsibility to help address this issue. 
To start with the school, teachers and also social workers who are in school should provide more support to students and regularly check up on them, talk to them, and see what teenagers actually feel and detect early signs of um, social problems such as anxiety or depression so that the problem may be resolved before it gets too far. As for the community, I believe that everyone sitting here today, you also have a responsibility to educate the young today not to bully the others, to respect the others, and whilst we can have our own views, we must not impose it on others. Thank you.